Hey Astroaddicts, my name is Tim and this is Astroaddict. So in this video I wanted to show you all the equipment I use for a night of deep sky imaging. So let's get started right away. So here we have the so-called base of operations. The telescope is right over here. And I think let's start with the base, shall we? So, the base of almost every astrophotography gear while, pass, while cars are passing by. The base of almost every astrophotography gear is of course the mount. And this mount is the, of course, what else should it be? The Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro SynScan mount. If you buy this thing new, I paid, I paid 1100 euros for this one. The Skywatcher ATQ5 comes with, of course, the mount head with included polar finder scope. Always very handy. It comes with two kind of weights, each 5.1 kilos. A nice convenient metal plate for your stuff and of course the SynScan hand controller. The base of all this, a solid tripod mount of course included in the ATQ5. It's pretty solid steel except for even the luggage department at the airport managed to get a dent into this one so I still think it's pretty solid. The hand controller is connected to the mount head over the cable and here we have the all the inputs the mount has the hand controller DC 12 volts on off switch and the auto port which I will cover later. This is a go-to astro mount so as every go-to mount it needs power and the power it gets from I got this power station from Omegon it was about I think 270 euros. This power station can hold up up to 17 watt. I don't know what's it called in English. Uh, hours of watts. Yes, I, I said that. It has two parts, each with 12 volts and 10 amps outputs. That's pretty uh, a lot of current. It has a nice display tells you when it's fully charged, charging and ready to use and when it needs a recharge. The on switch, now the telescope has power. It has a convenient red light in the front and an even brighter white light in the front as well. And for your convenience, I don't want to get a copyright strike for this one, and even a radio. And for your tablet or smartphones, a small little USB output. So this device came with all assortments of plugs and switches and can be recharged overnight. And it takes pretty lot of time to recharge, so best to do that overnight when you are not using it. Now that the entirety of the base is covered, let's get right to the interesting part. The SCO. This is the Omegon 102 714mm ED. It's a refractor telescope. Pretty standard like the HQ entry level photography or astronomy gear I'd say. It came with the dovetail bar, the rings to hold everything in place. I removed the hand grip so you can could easily lift it here. I removed it for better stability with the guide scope. The focus ring, pretty smooth, even with the dual focuser here. You can use these screws to lock the focus in place. And the, of course, two inch focus tube connects right to the field flatten of the camera, which I will also cover later. There's also the, of course, extendable do shield and the only thing I kind of dislike about this one the 
focus the Fox tube cannot hold that much of weight so the camera with this uh, every gear attached over here if the point if, if the scope is pointing straight up it's almost a little bit too much for the focus to hold on if the screw is not um, fully screwed in which is quite a lot of stress for this one so I, the focus is not that solid maybe you want to get something with if you have gear much heavier than this you want to get in a better focus a focus tube for this one riding on top of the primary imaging scope is my auto guiding setup if you want to know more about auto guiding also i shot a video about this before so check this out and this is the omegon 60 millimeter guide scope also i'd say a pretty standard a pretty common uh, small refractor scope for this one let's view it from here <laughs> the focus ring on this one very smooth i like this thing a lot come on focus if you loosen the focus screw a very smooth focus you can do almost any point of accuracy accur accuracy with this one and in the back with a little extension tube the Altair GP Cam 2. This little pink thing here from Altair Astro. I can't remember the price. I will show the price, of course, for every single thing I got here. It connects via the USB and the ST4 port. The USB port connects to the laptop. And the ST4 port connects exactly to the auto guider port in the telescope. So that's how the Get camera, the laptop and the telescope are communicating with, with each other. This setup is used for auto guiding to get your scope commands, your guide commands even smoother and sharper images than before. So up to now this is basically a very common I'd say astronomy gear and what makes this an astrophotography gear is of course the camera. This is a Canon EOS 750D this has been of course astro modified so the ir cut filter has been removed by by the service where i bought this one it cost about 800 euros i got this extra battery group which can hold up to two batteries two battery packs and this can last almost forever in an imaging night this astronomy camera is connected to the focus tube of the telescope over a T-ring adapter from the Canon bayonet to the T adapter mount. I have a little in between here, a little ex uh, T extension tube to get the right distance between the field flattener and the camera sensor. And talking about the field flattener, here it is. So this little piece of equipment right here not included the t-tube and the extension tube maybe i can I, I won't screw them off so this is the omegon two inch field flattener a field flattener is a tool to get the stars at the edges of your frame right in focus and sharp because every telescope suffers from spherical aberration a normal occurrence which deforms the stars at the edges so this little extra lens here gets rid of this error. So this field flattener including all the adapters and rings was I think 300 euros and it can fit right into the camera here. I love this little click sound it does. Everything ready? Yes. So this 2 inch tube can go directly into the back of the telescope. And here we have the Mighty camera. I shoot my pictures uh, mostly through filters because I'm living in the middle of the city here so I'm under some heavy light pollution. You can see in the mirror of the DSLR here and the shutter right behind it. So the filters I use for my astro imaging I have the astronomic HAL 12 nanometer, so some hydrogen narrowband imaging. 
So this is the EOS clip version, you can see right here the the red outline of the filter makes everything pretty red. This lets only one wavelength of light pass, 656 nanometers. And the EOS clip size, it can clip right with no screws right into the camera and easy with one pull it's back out. The other filter I'm using, also the astronomic CLS. The CLS stands for City Light Pollution. So. The meaning of this filter, everything has a very blue shape, but uh, this filter is almost like a luminance filter. So this is only for the data of the light that's coming in and it blocks out all the artificial lightning produced by cities and the airport, which is also around here, which is the most annoying part. And of course, this is also the Canon ES clip filter, so it can fit right in here. And now we'll get to the small little accessories. Some of them you absolutely need for deep sky imaging and some of them you don't but I still like them because they are very handy. So if you want to get deep sky images with auto guiding with a camera you want to bring a laptop. So this is I'd say a pretty mid-level price range laptop. The important thing you don't need that much of calculation power you need a big battery in this in the ultra battery mode with the display um, d downwards it can hold almost 10 hours so this is pretty nice I have here a little cleaning bag for any kind of optical uses I have a dew heater this little device gets strapped around the front of the telescope to keep, to keep the lens warm and just a little, some degrees about the, uh, over the ambient temperature th so that the lens doesn't do up in cold nights. So this is powered also with the power tank over here with the 12 volt DC output. And over this little device you can control the heater straps. Keep everything level, of course. Important to get good precise images. The Batnov mask, I've shot a video on this one before. So, this little focusing tool. Goes right on top of your scope to help you sharpen your images and to, to get the right focus. Let's put the cap on here again. I don't want any dust on there. Here are the two filters as before. And I have this little red dot visor, just like in PUBG. So this little thing before I... The Skywatcher HQ needs the star alignment in the beginning setting, setting up. So this little red dot finder, maybe I can activate it so you can see it. Let's put it against, against the white wall here. So, there you can see the red dot. The good thing is that the angle of view is completely ir irrelevant, so you can, out of any direction, if the red dot is over the star, your telescope is right on that star. That's very helpful when setting up. What, you, what else do you need in the imaging night? Of course, chair, table, a little makeshift table out of just a wooden plate and a keyboard holder. Pretty solid I'd say. And other accessories of course. Headlamp with red and right white light. And of course not for deep sky but if you want to take some wide field exposures. An ultra wide angle lens like the Samyang 40 mm, 14 mm always very handy. And everything else I have left in my box here. I have a couple of screwdrivers to fix some errors on the scope. I got a 90 degrees mirror, which I'm not using anymore because I'm using the camera. Since I have enough batteries now, I'm using the camera to get my, make the star alignment. I got a little shirt and rubber, rubber band for the flat frames. 
I think I will shoot a video about making flat frames sometime in the future. The hand grip for the uh, scope over there, I screwed it off. And some dust caps of the equipment which is currently attached to the scope. The scope itself came in this case. It's very solid, I like this case a lot. And you can also lock it with some keys you can wear by your side. And if you want to shoot videos on stuff about astronomy, I have a basic Canon DSLR and a microphone on top of that. And of course, a tripod. And my feet. And the cover of the camera. So, this is my entire gear I use for my deep sky images. If you have any questions, you can of course leave a question in the comments and I will answer them as soon as possible. Let me know if you want to see any videos about this gear in the future. If I should say something more about, for example, the auto-guiding, the Batnoff mask or the scope itself, or how to set up the Skywatcher mount, I think I will do a setup video on the Skywatcher mount in the future. So, and all I can do now is wait for the, the darkness, because the sky is super clear tonight. I don't think that I will shoot an entire astrophoto this night, because the moon is out and I have to work tomorrow, so... I think I will wrap up a little star trail image, maybe with this in the front. So, what I can wish you now are clear nights.